I had someone say, oh, you didn't know that? I thought it was pretty obvious. Leave! If you watch this whole video, your text game is going to be through the roof. This is the only guide you need. And I guarantee you, you're going to learn something insanely useful in this video. So watch all the way until the end or else you're missing out on great advice. Something that might even change your life. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to use some of you guys as bad examples. So I'm very sorry. But hey, you got in a video. So that's all that matters, right? Okay, so first off. Let's just go through some of your guys' channel art and look at your text and see what we could do better. Okay, so first off, we got this guy. I noticed this one. And at first glance, it yes, it's not that bad, but it could be enhanced. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to try to replicate this and show you how to make it better. So he has a plain red background. I'm going to add some text to it. Let's go ahead and make it bigger. To about here, okay? It's not too important that he has a warp and whatnot. That's not the issue. Well, the issue, I mean, it is cutting off. You also don't want it to cut off. So that, yes, that should be fixed. It should be a little bit smaller. But that's besides the point. So it seems like he has just plain red text, right? And he has a stroke. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's not necessarily bad. Oh, wait, it's white. It's white stroke. Hold on. It's not necessarily bad, but little things can make it so much better. So here's what I would do. I would actually use a gradient overlay instead. And I would change the color from like a slightly darker red to a light red, right? So just that alone gives it a little bit more depth. It makes it look a lot better. So, I mean, you can see the difference already. It's very subtle. Now to make this even better is by adding an inner glow, right? Change the blend mode to um, overlay. And then change the color to white. Bump up the opacity a little bit and the spread and size. Like this. Okay. Let me change the background color. I can't stand this red. Okay. You see that? Look at the difference. If you care about the details, you'll appreciate this and be like, okay, yeah, that looks a lot better. It could be even better. Okay. So it's on a plain red background, right? Let's go ahead and bring it back. Now, what can you do to make the text look even better? Well, if you go into your text, you can add a drop shadow. I always change the angle to 90 degrees. Adjust the uh, spread and size a bit, the distance, right? Then lower the opacity a little bit. You could adjust the uh, angle if you want, actually. But Okay, so here's a quick comparison, right? Just those little changes make it look so much better. Next person we're going to make an example out of is this guy, right? Okay, so as you can see, the text looks kind of trippy when you look at it. I think it's because they put like bevel and emboss on really small text. So you could just see like darkness within. Avoid that. Plus the text is too small, right? So it looks like he has this. He has the uh, this font, I think, something like this. And um, just don't add inner shadow or... Bevel and emboss. I would only mess with bevel and emboss if you know what you're doing. It can really make it look like crap. And the stroke's too big for the text, too. It just kind of mushes it all together. It's not very appealing. So let's go ahead and make what he made. So you can pretty much use the tips that I just gave in the last one to make this better. But it looks like they have either like this, a bevel and emboss, or like an inner shadow. And it's like, I don't know, it looks just kind of sloppy if you look at it closely. So I would just ditch the inner shadow or whatever you have completely. And I would just add a like satin, right? And the satin's going to look like this initially. Just turn the opacity down a little bit and it still gives you that nice looking depth. But it doesn't take away from the text. And for the stroke, you've got like some black stroke, right? Now look what happens when the text is small, right? And you have inner shadow or whatever you had on there and you add that look it just it all kind of mushes together right so just avoid that keep it simple and always keep the text readable because that's the most important thing i mean i would even make the text bigger but just stay away from the inner shadow bevel and emboss if you don't know what you're doing because it can look really crappy like this looks like junk so just stay away from it unless you know what's going on the next person is this guy and you can take the same tips from the very first one I would totally do that because the text is like way too bland. 
there's no depth to it in the shadow just looks kind of eh and it's just the blue on blue it just kind of blends together i mean you got to have something to offset it the shadow would be a good move but if you did the gradient overlay like i showed on the first one on this it would look so much better and here's a little tip of what i do so like let's say you have some text on a background like this let me go ahead and get an example real quick okay let's say you just wanted simple text with uh one solid color right it's you can't read it i mean it's just like it blends in with the background but there's a few ways you can get around this so you don't always have to do a drop shadow right like that's one way to do it but a way that i like to do is i like to go down here to new layer drag it below the text layer go to your brush tool make sure this top box is uh, black and just hold alt and right click up to make it soft down to make it hard left to make it small right to make it uh, big and just soften it up a bit and just draw behind the text like this right then go up here and turn the opacity down until it's like what you want like this and just like that you can read the text and it still looks good it doesn't take away from anything now if you combine this with blurring the background now you can either use the blur tool itself and blur that same area almost maybe a little bit farther out oh hold on that is a way you could do it too i don't know why it's making it look like low quality but or i highly recommend blurring your background with the gaussian blur so go up to filter blur and gaussian blur and just give it a slight blur then your text will really stand out and that's how i'd avoid this um because i know some of you might just want a solid color and that's fine these are some workarounds but if you even just added the gradient like i showed before and then added the inner glow it makes a massive difference and i'm also going to mention color choices right like this is not a bad combination but if you ever struggle with it i'm gonna leave down in the description a link to this cheat sheet right here so pretty much how it works is i'm sure you guys know the opposite color is its complementary color which typically looks pretty good together so like red and green you know it's like christmas colors orange and blue i think of like the broncos or something and then purple and yellow so if you guys combine them right so like we have our text here and then we'll make some more real quick and I'll show you an example of complementary colors so we'll do um first off leave down in the comments what's your guys favorite color combo I gotta know mine's pink and blue okay so let's go with yellow a slightly darker yellow ooh, gross and then a lighter yellow right well actually since the background's blue we'll do blue and orange so we'll do orange text. It's a little bit yellow. But orange text for the top one. And then we can do like blue for this one. Now, personally, I find that complementary colors look kind of weird together. You know, I don't know why. I like, I like more like pastels and stuff like this, you know. It's softer on the eyes. But um, yeah, technically these are complementary colors. Let's get rid of the background. So yeah, believe it or not, these are complementary colors. They do look good together scientifically. Now, personally, I don't think they do look too great together. But I mean, hey, it's it works. So I would just use this if you ever need like help on color combos. Like here you can see uh, yellow, violet, yellow, orange, blue, violet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Another example of what I don't like, guys. You know this. I've mentioned it so many times. Don't use black text. And I'm not saying you can't ever. It's just chances are you're not going to use it properly. It's going to look bad. And this is an example of it. When I see this, I get bored, right? I'm already like, I'm just, I'm bored. I'm asleep. Add something to it. You can have black text. What if you have, um, you make Photoshop white? And then you make these black, right? I mean, even then, it still will look like crap, but it's still better. At least it'll make this stand out more. And the thin text, too, with the black. I mean, come on, man. Also, another huge thing is composition. And it doesn't just apply to text, but it can. 
I mean, as you can see here, the text composition is often to the left and higher up. I don't know why it should be at least centered. And if you have this, move it to the left, but it should still be centered vertically. So that is just stay away from that. Don't do that. Another example, this person was on my live stream that I just did. Oh, also real quick, quick promo for my new graphics pack. Go to cambitcreates.com, scroll down and you'll see it's right here, the elemental pack. Guys, it's a free pack with hundreds of elemental effects. I'm telling you, it's insane. You guys, come on, download it. It's free. It's literally free, guys. Just download it. Maybe leave a nice little review for me. Maybe leave a tip. But hey, it's free. Use it. Enjoy it. Let's get back to it. So we got this guy, right? Another example, black text. It looks kind of crappy, right? And I don't like it. White text would have looked so much better. And it's just as simple to do. So guys, keep that in mind always. Also, font choice is huge. It's so important. Like, this font's good. Like, most of the time on YouTube, you're going to want to use thick, bold fonts like this. My top ones are Anton, luckiest guy. That one's more goofy, but eh. And then Indigo is good, too. Okay, stay away from cursives, guys. Stay away from crap. It, when it's cursive and thin, you can't read it. And you know, the people that use the cursive fonts also use black text. So you really just have no shot. I feel like sometimes people just purposely make it to where you can't read it. Like it's like their goal to make impossible readable text, right? Like, does that even make sense? I don't know. Impossible readable. What I mean is stop doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple, right? I don't need to go into it. Like, what is this? Am I like promoting a wedding or something? Like, guys, stay away from it. Stop. Stop. Stick with this. This looks good. It stands out. People cannot miss it. You can read it from a mile away. It says Cambit. It says subscribe to Cambit, dude. It's so simple. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Font choice is huge. Composition is huge. Color choice is huge. Readability is even huger. Okay? Always remember that. Now, I've mentioned this so many times too, but this is a text tutorial. It's all about text. So I'm going to show you again. If you've already seen it, Watch anyway. Go up to window, plugins, and style. Tons of free styles. You guys, you just click install, right? Like you like this one, right? Great. You like that. Install it. Double click on your text and go here. And boom, you got all these free text styles instantly. You don't even have to worry. You can be like, man, I can't, I'm not doing this. Like, I don't care. I'm lazy. Don't worry. Just do this. Boom. Done. Perfect text. You're good. It's simple. Okay. You can be lazy. You can be creative. Whatever you want to do, guys, you can do it. It's all about text around here, okay? It's all about text. Now, let me give you another example. Since we're all about text, I made this example earlier in another video. If you guys have text, right, and you want to do something like this, to where you have text over here and text over here, chances are you guys are going to have this one right here and this one kind of to the left, and it's all wonky. It doesn't look good, right? easy solution that I just found. So I think I show it. So when you have your uh, move tool selected, there's going to be a distances button right up here, right? That way these pop up. Let me just show you myself. Okay. So we have our text. We have distances. Let's check it. Okay. Now numbers popped up. Don't freak out guys. Don't freak out. It's all right. Let's go ahead and shrink it a little bit. We have text one and text two. Okay, so now how do we get these in the same spot on both sides? Well, it's very simple. You see these numbers? That's how many pixels they are away from the edge. Okay, so 271 pixels from the top. Now, you can use your arrow keys to be very precise. Up arrow moves you up a pixel. So you can get pretty close freehand and then arrow key the rest. So... 230, 324. We got to get these closer. 278, 277. That's as close as we're going to get. That means it's completely centered vertically. Same with the left and right. It's 85 pixels from the right. So let's make this one 85 pixels from the left. Six, uh, 89. What was it? 85. 85. Boom. Now, they're both perfectly aligned with each other. Parallel. And it's that simple and it looks good. 
Okay, remember that. That's an insane tip that I just gave you, and I put you on it. I had someone say, Oh, you didn't know that? I thought it was pretty obvious. Leave! Because I didn't know that, and I've been doing this for eight years, okay? That's my bad, but now I'm putting you on it. And my throat hurts. Guys, here's another pro tip, right? We have our text here. How do we make it look even better? Well, go to new layer. Go to your brush tool. Change the top box to white. Okay, make it soft like this. Change the blend mode to overlay. And then do a few little clicks. A few little clicks on the text. Like this. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm giving you gold. I've been, you know how much gold I've been giving you guys the past few videos? Look at that. Oh my god, it takes it to a whole other level. It's crazy. It's, oh my. Alright, back on track, back on. Actually, you know what? That's it. That's the video. That's everything I got. I mean, I might be forgetting something. But I'm pretty sure that's all you need to know. I mean, you obviously know the basics, like aligning like this and stuff. But, and warping, right? I, I might as well talk about it. Might as well talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, you get your text, right? Make it black. Don't do that, but we're going to do it for this uh, section. Um, you got your text, right? Go up to warp. Choose a style. Tons of styles to choose from, guys. You can make your text look a little bit cooler by doing this, right? I'm sure you guys knew that. Simple stuff. Boom. Text. It's pretty wicked. Another way you can do it. I showed this in my uh, most recent photo P guide. So you have your text, right? Uh, control Alt T to free select, free transform. I mean, right click anywhere in it and perspective is grayed out. That's because you got to right click on it and rasterize it first. Okay. Now it's here. Perspective. Now, if you grab one of these boxes, whoa, look at that. That is wicked. That is sick. Okay. You can do wicked things with perspective. Let's do some more. You can go like that. You can go like this. You can go like left and right. Like, look, there's a brick wall. Put it on the brick wall. It looks like it's on the wall. Let's just do it. Now, I'm sure there's more efficient ways to do this, but I don't care because this is an easy way as well. So text, right? We got our text. Let's go ahead and make it white. So we can read it, guys. Control Alt T. Right click on it. Oh, wait, it's grayed out. Don't forget to rasterize it. Let's do it again. Perspective. Now, look. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now, what did I teach you earlier? Drop shadow. Drop shadow. Now it looks like it's 3D. Close the distance, turn the opacity up. Nah, nah, nah. It looks like crap. But look at that. That's cool. Guys, that's so cool. I'm teaching you crazy techniques. And I think that's all I got for the video. So I hope you guys learned something. You know what? I know you guys learned something. So because of that, you gotta... You gotta download the free graphics pack. Alright? See? Come on. That's not very difficult. That's all you gotta do. Check out my website. Start downloading free stuff. I mean, it's free. And then this stuff costs money, but it's cheap. You know, it's supporting me and you get something for it. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong. So I'm going to stop rambling. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Before you go, don't forget to check out my website for tons of bonus content like my exclusive courses, graphics packs, and socials like my Discord server. Plus the soon-to-be Cambit Academy. If you want to level up your designs even faster, consider joining the Cambit Creates channel membership. You'll get access to a folder packed with hundreds of effects, copyright-free music, and more to take your content to the next level. Hit that join button or check the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Keep creating.